feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can go. Even when there's no hope. 20th century comedies that are still in our regular rotation. With thousands of TV channels and dozens of streaming services today, it's impossible to keep up with all the new shows, so sometimes, we don't even try. Even when you're only picking up a sitcom, it's often the best decision to rewatch something familiar and comforting, something we already know will make us laugh. Even though these shows came out in the last millennium, here are 20 sitcoms of the 20th century that are still in our regular rotation. 1 of 20. I Love Lucy 1957 to 1951. Let's start with an early sitcom and we mean really early, since sitcoms were first introduced in the late 1940s and I Love Lucy premiered in 1951. Starring the super cute Lucille Ball in the title role and the charming and talented Desi Arnaz. Her husband, Ricky, aired classic episode after classic episode full of the funniest scenes on television to date. Whether Lucy is shown struggling with a conveyor belt in a candy factory or drunk on Vitamia gamin while futilely trying to film a commercial, I Love Lucy made our grandparents laugh. Parents it makes us laugh and continues to make us laugh. Until today. 2 of 20. The Dick Van Dyke Show 1966 to 1961. After cutting his teeth on Broadway, Dick Van Dyke got his own TV show in 1961, and thank God for it. The Dick Van Dyke Show not only put this iconic modern-day funny man in front of a national audience, but also launched the career of Mary Tyler Moore. The show won 15 Emmys over five seasons thanks to its smart, complex, and sometimes silly scripts, many of which were written by show creator and executive producer Carl Reiner. 3 out of 20. Monsters 1966-1964. Our only complaint about Monsters is that we were only given two seasons of Herman Fred Gowan, Lily Evan DiCarlo, Grandpa L. Lewis, Eddie Butch Patrick and Marilyn Beverly Owen Pat Priest. In classic sitcom fashion, the episodes were interchangeable, with our favorite episodes featuring the Munster family running around looking and living normal, while the regular citizens were seen as weird and unattractive. This includes just another pretty face in season 2, when Herman is horrified to discover that the electric shock has disfigured him with a face, which is just Fred Quinn without the monster makeup. 4 out of 20. Get Smart 1965 to 1970. TV producers wanted to spoof James Bond, Mel Brooks wanted to make a series about an idiot, and the result was Get Smart. Along with writer Buck Henry, Brooks created the character of Maxwell Smart, a wandering secret agent equipped with a seemingly endless array of impractical gadgets like his famous shoe phone. Get Smart is a hit and endlessly rewatchable thanks to a stellar performance by lead actor Don Adams, a host of big name guest stars, an ever changing storyline, and some memorable catchphrases. 5 out of 20, The Mary Tyler Moore Show 1977 to 1970. The Mary Tyler Moore Show was not just a funny sitcom, but a groundbreaking series that focused on a single, independent, working woman. Moore was warm and witty as the lead actor, and he surrounded himself with a cast full of comedy big names that spanned the show's seven seasons, including Ed Asner, Ted Knight, Gavin McLeod, Valerie Harper, Betty White, and Cloris. Leachman since the entire cast is gone now, it's always nice to see them again in reruns. 6 out of 20. The Bob Newhart Show 1978 to 1972. It wasn't necessarily the main star that drew audiences to the Bob Newhart Show. Sure, Newhart's humor was central as a private psychologist, but his strong-willed wife Susan Plesht, sarcastic receptionist Marsha Wallace, 
airline pilot neighbor Bill Daly. Female orthodontist friend Peter Beaneras and Dr. A rotating cast of patients including Jack Riley, Florida Fribas and Howard Hessman is what made the show fun week after week for six full seasons of hilarity and hijinks. 7 out of 20. Faulty Tower 1979-1975. Never heard of Faulty Towers this comedy stars John Cleese as Basil Faulty. The rude, dishonest and downright ridiculous owner of an English seaside hotel with his domineering wife Sybil Prunella Scales. Faulty Towers isn't quite as captivating and captivating as Monty Python, but if you're a fan of Clay's, you can't miss his performance in this lovable hostess. Eight out of twenty. Taxi 1983-1978 You can't go wrong with an all-star cast that includes the likes of Judd Hirsch, Danny DeVito, Jeff Conaway, Mary Lou Henner, Tony Danza, Andy Kaufman, Christopher Lloyd, and Carol Kane and Taxi certainly got things right. Is In just five seasons, the employees of the fictional Sunshine Cab Company earned an astounding 31 Emmy nominations and won 18 Emmy nominations. We first reviewed taxi iterations after TV Guide called DeVito's Curmudgeon. Lee Louis De Palma as number one on their list of the greatest TV characters of all time, and we haven't stopped watching since. 9 of 20 Police Squad 1982 Do you know the Naked Gun movies starring Leslie Nielsen then you may have noticed that the full title of the first film, released in 1988, is actually the Naked Gun, from the files of Police Squad. That's because this comedy trilogy is actually a spin-off of a little-known TV series from 1982 that was cancelled after only six episodes. The ratings were low, but the show's quality was not. Like the movies, Police Squad starred Leslie Nielsen as the inept, deadpan detective Frank Dreben, and also like the films, it was packed with rapid-fire jokes, spot-on pop culture parodies, and sight gags both obvious and subtle. We rewatch it not just for all the jokes we know, but for the new ones we're constantly discovering. 10 of 20. New Heart 1982-1990. New Heart had an identity crisis in its first couple of seasons. Vermont in owners Dick and Joanna Loudon Bob Newhart and Mary Fran and their handyman Tom Poston were there since the beginning, but two main characters played by Jennifer Holmes and Stephen Campman were ditched, Julia Duffy and Peter Scolari replaced them, and Larry, his brother Daryl, and his other brother Daryl William Sanderson, Tony Poppenfuss and John Voldstad were given regular roles. The trio of brothers were one of the most memorable parts of Newhart, which also had one of the most infamous finales in TV history. 11 of 20. Cheers 1982-1993. There's a special comfort in re-watching Cheers, like you're one of the regulars pulling up a stool next to Norm and Cliff George Went and John Ratzenberger while getting served by Sam and Carla Ted Danson and Rhea Perlman. We don't care if it's the earlier Coach and Diane Nicholas Cola Santo and Shelley Long seasons or the later Woody and Becky Woody Harrelson and Kirsty Alley years we're always in the mood for a drink at Cheers. 12 of 20. Seinfeld 1989-1998 Often referred to as one of the greatest sitcoms of all time, Seinfeld is a show that we'll never stop watching. It was a perfect snapshot of pop culture, idiosyncrasies, and societal norms of the 1990s, while coining some of its own cultural contributions and terminology, 
including everything from close talker, low talker, and man hands, to yada yada yada, sponge worthy, and anti-dentite. And as far as eccentric characters go, you can't beat Jerry Jerry Seinfeld, George Jason Alexander, Elaine Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and, of course, Kramer Michael Richards. 13 of 20. The Simpsons 1989 present. It feels strange to include The Simpsons on a list of 20th century sitcoms when new episodes are still airing and the show has been consistently running for more than 30 years. But this animated series about Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, Maggie, and all the residents of Springfield is one of the most important parts of modern television, and we'll never get tired of watching episodes from the show's prime, which began in season 1 or 2 and ended somewhere between seasons 10 and 12. 14 of 20. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air 1990 to 1996. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air is the story all about how Will Smith's life got flipped turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute to explain why we still watch the sitcom more than 30 years after it first aired. Not only was it the impetus of Smith's illustrious acting career, but it was a genuinely smart, sweet, comical, and, at times, poignant show about life in the latter 20th century for young black men and black families. Despite tackling serious issues like gun violence, crime, and fractured families, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air also gave us plenty of classic comedy moments including Alfonso Ribeiro's famous Carlton dance and Will's constant ribbing of his family and their butler, Jeffrey. 15 of 20. Absolutely fabulous 1992-1996, 2001 to 2004. Booze, drugs, cigarettes, handsome young men, and all the excesses of the 90s surrounded best friends Eddie Jennifer Saunders and Patsy Joanna Lumley throughout the five seasons of Absolutely Fabulous. This British series was supposed to be a satire of consumerism and capitalism, but most fans ended up idolizing the fashion-forward friends, who are infinitely watchable as they serve up jokes and find themselves in situations that will make you choke with laughter. 16 of 20 Frasier 1993 to 2004. It's remarkable that 11 outstanding seasons of Cheers were immediately followed by 11 equally impressive seasons of Frasier. Although the latter show had a different vibe complete with more sophisticated characters, complex storylines, and witty jokes, it was just as enjoyable. Much of that was due to surrounding the Fraser Crane Kelsey Grammer character with a strong cast of David Hyde Pierce, John Mahoney, Jane Leaves, and Perry Gilpin, as well as some familiar faces from our favorite Boston bar. 17 of 20. Friends 1994 to 2004. It's safe to say that Friends might be the most popular 90s sitcom. It was universally adored during its initial run and has picked up additional fans in every generation since, with most viewers identifying with it enough that they know if they're a Rachel Jennifer Aniston, a Monica Courtney Cox, or a Phoebe Lisa Kudrow, or a Joey Matt LeBlanc, Chandler Matthew Perry, or Ross David Schwimmer. And even though there are 10 full seasons, could there be a more quotable show? 18 of 20. South Park 1997 present. We've been heading on up to South Park for more than 25 seasons, and have no intention of quitting. Whether Stan, Cartman, Kyle, and Kenny are hanging out with Mr. Hankey in Season 1 or battling PC Principal in Season 20-something and regardless if the plot is a searing satire or just an ridiculous romp we love watching reruns featuring this foul-mouthed foursome, as well as Butters, Randy, and anyone else. In the fictional Colorado town created by the brilliant Trey Parker and Matt Stone. 19 of 20. The King of Queens 1998 to 2007. A dumb, overweight, funny husband with an attractive, nagging wife. We've seen this premise before so many times, 
yet somehow King of Queens still managed to establish Doug Kevin James as an endearing everyman and Carrie Lee Remini as a strong-willed but supportive and loving spouse. Plus, it had plenty of Jerry Stiller ranting, raving, and doing what he does best. With all the popular sitcoms of the 90s, King of Queens often gets overlooked and forgotten, but its nine seasons were easily one of the most consistently funny sitcom runs of all time. 20 out of 20. Family Guy 1999 present, remember that couple formula from the last slide well, Family Guy tried it once again in animated form, much like The Simpsons but still forged its own path through edgier and more offensive humor, even more outlandish characters and plot lines, and their signature cutaway jokes. Family Guy is still airing today, and creator Seth MacFarlane barely snuck it into the 20th century, with a 1999 debut, but it's in constant rotation in our home and absolutely deserves a spot on this list. Twin